Well, it's exactly 10 days that Africa's biggest democracy round off the first half of its general election where the incumbent president, Mohamed Buhari, is set to steer the ship of the nation for another four years. Now, with many upsets that characterize the results of the last National Assembly election, the frenzy of electioneering seemed to be far from dwindling as 29 states set to elect their governors, while the State House of Assembly poll will hold in all 36 states of the country. All of these in four days' time. The stew brewing, the stove on, pot on fire. It's cooking time. Well, it's political stew. I'm Suleiman uh, Later, welcome. It's uh, more or less like a sludge of stew in 29 states that will be going into the polls uh, this Saturday in Nigeria. Whatever that means for a lot of people, they're trying to decipher what this will mean uh, following the aftermath of uh, the February 23 election. And that's why we're here to actually look at that and see what exactly went down. In all of that, People are still talking about that election and how much of credibility uh, well to put on that and also looking at what the international community uh, is saying on that election. We'll be talking with uh, politicians and people from across political divide to actually x-ray this moment. But again, our political stew is now 30 minutes, so we'll be taking them bit by bit. But joining me this uh, well evening is Ayo. Oyalo, who is a political economist and also a politician. Good to see you on the show today. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Well, Simon. good to have you. Very quickly, I know you participated in that election and you'll also be participating in elections coming this Saturday. And we're trying to look at what went on on that day and look at what, you know, apprehension many held before it, that election. And... I also recall that we had you in the studios, uh, you know, Nigeria votes uh, that, yeah. that period. And we also talked about the security concern, uh, looking at uh, the ethnic card that, you know, that were also brought into that election. Um, well, quite frankly, we didn't quite see anything about religion. And that's <laughs> soothing for the very first time because both candidates, leading candidates, we, we are both Muslims. We are Muslims. Now, they are both Fulanis. So suddenly the Fulanis have got uh, some form of reprise. <laughs> from the the ethnic proliferation, I mean, we have criminals in every tribe. We never have them being called Igbo criminal, Yoruba, uh, 419, um, Igbo drug pusher. Nobody calls them by their ethnic. A criminal is a criminal. Irrespective but of where you Irrespective from. of where you come from, because whatever you do does not depict your tribe. It is who you are. But unfortunately, the Fulanis got a bad dose. Everything that happens, any criminality around some areas, you hear full and it me. And they, they criminalize an entire ethnic tribe, I mean ethnic uh, uh, people, and make them look like they are a, a race of criminal, which was completely, completely wrong. But fortunately for them, we had two Fulani leading in the election. Mm. So suddenly nobody remembers that Fulanis were criminal any longer. They are now seen as Nigerians. We thank God for little mercies. So... That was why you didn't have the religious issue because both of them were also I'm, Muslims. I'm actually, I'm actually excited that 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 didn't rear its head. But again, <clears throat> I'm trying to look at the upsets, the surprises, and the wins and the losses, yeah. and the aftermath, and uh, the the partying and the you know uh, that is still on, especially in the social media. But now let's take them bit by bit. Looking at the outcome, of course. Uh, you would say you saw that coming because well, uh, well the, you wouldn't <laughs> say you saw everything coming yes for the presidential what, what, election what did, you, what did you see coming yeah <laughs> for the presidential election i knew president buhari will will win but you remember you just said something about upset the governor of Oyo state did what nobody has ever done in history of Oyo state they have never had a governor who had two terms he had is the first to be elected twice in an election to be governor twice but he couldn't win a Senate seat. As an incumbent governor. As an incumbent governor. So it tells you two things. One, that there were surprises. But secondly, which is more fundamental, that the votes actually counted. Because if votes don't count, then that man will be a senator-elect as we speak today. Same thing with the other presidential candidate who was, I mean, presidential aspirant under the PDP, 
the uh, governor Dan Kwambo of Gombe, he also lost his senatorial uh, aspiration in that election. So a lot of things were not expected, but they happened. Even so, though the People's Democratic Party, which is the biggest you know, opposition, opposition in the country, would think differently. But I want us to look at uh, why you have put this as some form of you know, logic to say, okay, vote that counted. For me, that, that's for uh, me, it's a plus. You see, a loser who is a bad loser will always find a reason to explain away their loss. But you need to look at it clearly. If the elections were not credible, uh, an Ondo state that is being, uh, currently now being governed by an APC governor will not lost the state. Same thing with Oyo state. And the sitting governor who did what no other governor in that state has ever done, not even the great Bola Ige himself. We all know what Bola Ige means to all of us in Yoruba land. But Bola Ige couldn't get his second term. He lost to Olunloyo then in 1983 before the military came in. But this man, Ajimobi, got what Bola Ige could not get, a second term in office of Oyo State. But this man could not make senatorial seat. It mm -hmm. tells you that this election were credible. It tells you that, yes, there will always be some issues here and there. Nobody is saying it's completely flawless. But in the first time in our history, I think we have an election that you can be proud of. Maybe a little bit of violence here and there because it's, it's in some people's nature to be violent. You really can't stop that. But I believe that uh, the INEC and the security agency must have seen the lapses in the last election and they will use this opportunity to correct those lapses. But b b uh, f uh, fair and large, it's been good. And if you remember also, the foreign observers have already given it over 80% pass mark. In fact, you need just 70 to make an A, but they gave it over 80% fairness. So for me, I, I think rather than seek to destroy a system, we should deepen this system, be proud of it, and see how we can improve on it. If, if you say we should try as much as possible to deepen the system and, you know, deepening democracy is one slogan that we have heard from a lot of politicians and a lot of people are also concerned, asking questions of how we can deepen this democracy, knowing full well that uh, we have issues, you know, that always emanate after every election yeah. and uh, uh, bearing in mind that there will be complaints. <coughs> and uh, you must just, remember we are just, just 20 just, years in this practice. Well, well, for some, they still think that, uh, well, there's also complaints that are genuine that must be No, that is, to. that is where I, I love what the APC spokesperson, uh, not APC spokesperson, but the Presidential Campaign Council spokesperson, Festus Kayamo did today. He actually released a statement and urging uh, Elijah Atiku to go to court if he actually has uh, evidence. So for me, uh, that is what is right for anybody who is enlightened and educated. If you have issues, you go to court. You don't create all these rules, people begging you and making an issue. I mean, if but, you but, really but have not, evidence... But, but in all honesty, no, for me, but, if you but, have but evidence, he, he, you should go to court. But you're not the one to ask people to beg you, if anyone is telling no, you. No, that is what... If he has yeah. gone to court, so, nobody so will be begging him. So, so, he should... He has the right now to file. Tomorrow is another day he should file in court. No, no, no I, think, I think in all honesty, with respect to former Vice President Atiko Abubakar, he has every right to do that. Exactly. Then, then he don't needs he, he needs not to, to be reminded by your no no. By, you by are saying ABC. something about deepening democracy. There will be complaints, and I am saying if you have complaints and you think you are actually cheated and be, you be, think because you have evidence, you said why the ruckus? And I say well, no. The, the ruckus is because he, he's it's, not why created. I, I said something earlier. I, I, I think it's the polity and the people saying no. Let's not do this area of, boy thing they do in uh, inside Lagos when the area boy wants to fight. If you want to fight, punch the man. Don't say, I want to fight, then you take one ring off, you wait, you take the first shirt off, you are waiting for people to come and beg you and stop the fight. Don't bother doing that. Go ahead and file your case. I mean, for me, Elijah Abubakar has every right to go to court if he feels cheated. If he thinks he has won, then let him go to court because he keeps saying it's a stolen mandate, and that is not good for our democracy. That why, is why, why painting, you, you you're painting our democracy? system because you don't have the evidence yet. You have not won a case. For instance, if what, you are what, even caught, no, Suleiman, you know this. If, 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 if I caught you, that. if I caught you, if I even caught you stealing, you will still be called allegedly a stealer, I mean a thief, hmm. until the court pronounces you guilty as a thief. I can't call you a thief. So you can't say President Buhari stole your mandate when the court has not said that. So I think you should go to court. All this name-calling and Roku's raking is not good for our democracy. 
Well, I'm still uh, about, because you remember and, this and, same and, general and, and Buhari that he was still, calling when he was general Buhari before he won his election. Three times he felt cheated. Three times he went to court. Three times he lost in, in, in court. And he didn't make all these unnecessary issues. He still went for the fourth time. And so I'm I think saying, Elijah Bakar should go history, to court. History is still very much fresh in our minds. Exactly. Uh, when uh, President Buhari went to court. Exactly. Uh, I think the first time, you know, he they, spent they, 30 months in court. It, it, doesn't really, it doesn't really matter. I think the, uh, the, the government in office then didn't make a, you know, a mess of his attempt or his court you know and because he was not uh, waiting for world uh, world people to come and beg him he went of, of, court his, of his case in court and that is why a lot of people are still a little bit worried if the apc keeps you know taunting and making uh, no 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 i, I don't i don't process. agree if you remember if you you mentioned social media earlier today the there are a lot of wrong information being passed that the apc is begging him not to go to court because they are afraid of losing in court and i think it's not right for us i think if he truly truly feels cheated he should make his complaint in the right now, court, now, let's not in let, the court of public let's opinion. Let's on the issue. When you said uh, votes for the very first time, uh, a lot of votes counted, lot of in, votes an, count, yeah, yeah. in an election, and you gave, you know... I mean, you remember you, you gave the former governor of Delta State in, yeah. in Oduaga. You, you, you he gave, lost his, his bid. of some other yeah. big politicians yeah. in our political balance. Who naturally you, know, you think will win in our political election, environment. Yeah. They call them heavyweights. Uh, these are titans and they lost elections. They lost elections, yeah. Does, does that mean that the votes actually counted and not that something fishy happened? Well, if you are, because the, sitting, if you are the sitting governor and you think something fishy happened, then you should also go to court. Because for me, it's a joy that people can decide who their leaders will be. The people of Ohio State felt slighted by some of the things their governor did, despite having a second term, and they taught him a lesson at the polls. Now, for me, that is democracy in action. So, I think we rather should see the positive in this than trying to destroy an entire system that I think is working. I mean, we're just 20 years in this practice, for God's and, sake. And, and, and do you also think that the, the APC has learnt uh, you know, some lessons out of this election. I think they have because um, <laughs> for the one in Oyo State, for instance, they have realized where the error came from. And you could see the, the lot of brick uh, building being run and being made right now. I mean, they realize you need people. For instance, somebody, I don't, I'm, I'm forgetting all the names, but the yeah, man who was supposed to be the senator-elect, yeah. I mean, we're supposed to be the one who run for that senate seat that was taken off him has been begged and brought back to the APC fold because he came third in that election. If you added his okay, 40,000 he, he, he votes, yeah. he went to another if you added his 40,000 votes to the one Ajimobi got, then APC would have won that election. He left. So those are some of the mistakes they made. Allowing people to live with grievances unsolved, unresolved. So you don't do that when an election comes because the truth remains that some people have their sympathizers and no matter how you do it, if they feel cheated, they will always speak their voices loud at the polls. I mean, this man felt cheated and he went away. He didn't win the election. He came third. But if you added the votes he had, because the winner had 110, the governor had 85,000, and this man had 40,000 plus. If you added 40,000 to 85,000, what would that tell you? The senator, I mean, the governor would have been the senator, the senator elect as we speak, mm -hmm. or the man would have been the senator. So those are the mistakes they made in some states. And if you remember, this morning, the president made some visits. The vice president has started making his own since yesterday. So apparently, they saw where the errors, the mistakes, and the problems are. I think they are working to correct that. I no, think they're talking you know, about working to correct that because uh, some are still amazed that the vice president is still making, you know, his tour around exactly, the country. Exactly. Uh, is it because uh, of what they felt, you know? in this last election. We'll, we'll come back, I'll take a moment, we'll come back, we'll talk more about his, his visit and also look at some of those projections as we move into the elections this Saturday and that will be where we return. Stay with us. It's home stretch and uh, you're still watching Politicus 2 and uh, my guest is uh, Ayo Oyalo and we're looking at the elections of February 23rd and also looking at what plans the APC has got uh, as they move into the next phase of elections in the country. Uh, and uh, before we went on that very quick one, uh, we were talking about the vice president who's been going around. And I was asking you if you, the APC has lent some lessons and you've actually tried to highlight, talk about the bridge uh, building, you know, process that has been kicked uh, you know, off by the party. But 
I'm trying again to see if we can key into something, and that has to do with the international community. And if they've given this election about 80% pass mark, that is huge. It, really huge. it means that INEC has to actually. No, we, we have to give credit to INEC. INEC, po the political parties, politicians, and even the electorate and the security. Have to, yeah, politics. have to sustain that and also see how they can build on that. Yeah. In building on that, what else do you think will be the kind of agenda for a nation that has actually come out of an election that some have also described as the most heated in terms well, of... Well, uh, the president has set the ball in motion. You remember the first thing he said when he was doing his acceptance was to urge his supporters not to taunt people and to kind of like, we're all Nigerians. And I think that is the right thing to do. But we need to look beyond the politicians alone, beyond the presidency. Because we have to put them in, 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 in the right frame. What the leaders in other areas have done and are doing to divide us. The pastors, the imams, people making all these false prophecies and preaching hate messages from the pulpit and from the mat. Those are areas we need to look at. Our uh, traditional leaders too. Not necessarily the Obas or the King, but like the the Kotora or the uh, the Ohanese, the Afeniferi, and all this stuff. People need to now realize the election has come and gone. What is more important is that we must build this nation. A winner will always emerge in any contest. The winner has emerged. Now the time is right now for us to build a country. So the president has said the ball in rush. I mean, in motion. For me, that is a statemently speech saying, look, we have won the election. You don't need to taunt anybody any longer. We have a nation to build. So for me, those elders are called. I just called now. Many of them, we are one of the people, we are the people who actually hated the polity with all the negative hate messages. So now it is time for them to relax, call back their people where they have made mistakes, apologize, and let's move on. I mean, a pastor who went on pulpit and said the president will die, if he contests, I mean, for heaven's sake, where did we come to that point in our, in, our, in our history? So those are the things we need to look at. When people get to that point, then the, the division has gone beyond politics. It has become something else. So those are the people we need to speak with and beg. Speak to you because for religious leaders, some of their followers elevate them to the point of, God, of, God, of Godship. So they listen to them. They do what they ask them to do. So these are the people who need to be careful. You, 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 their, think, their you, you, you think the nation needs a, a national reconciliation? Exactly. We need national reconciliation and healing. Because on the long run, whatever this government does, good or bad, affects you and I. It doesn't affect only the government. So I don't want to wish a in, government in, evil. In, in, this, in this case, good. We don't exactly. Want, we, we don't want the government we don't want to, to do Exactly. Any, so whatever bad. they do affects us. So we want the good of the government. And that is why we must put in our own shift. And by putting our shift, I must see Suleiman as my friend, as my brother, as my co-national. Because on the long run, Nigeria belongs to all of us. I don't have another passport. If something bad happens to this country, God forbid, I am a, I will be a victim. You know, you it, will be it, a victim. It, it, it goes beyond rhetoric. It goes beyond words. So actions. What, are, what are those actions? So that I, you I see some of see them from, I, 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 from, from I, I, the I, government that will from the government through reconciliation from the government through, through healing. Because from, you recall that because especially those from Nigeria Southeast, they they felt at a point in time. The government of the day were not actually. No, that, that, is, know, that is where you will be careful. That's why we have to say people should be careful what they say. Okay, look at in terms of projects and infrastructural development. The Southeast has got more than its fair share from this government. I mean, for the first time, some markets that were identified, everything that was done, the Southeast is always on the pilot phase. Even when it comes to the school feeding program, they were in the pilot phase. Road construction, they are in the, in the pilot phase. The Niger, second Niger bridge is over 50% complete as we speak. The Zik mausoleum that was abandoned, nobody ever touched it. They were just talking about it. It's completed by this administration. Four senior ministers, four, not junior ministers, senior cabinet ministers are from the Southeast. So I think, I mean, the, the man running the DMO, he's an Igbo man, Ben Akaboize, even though he resides in Lagos before he was brought to Abuja. So I think... Uh, our leaders need to be fair to the followers because on the long run, people listen to them more. When you tell them, look, eventually it's not about just appointment. It's about giving us our fair share. Have they been denied their right? When this government gave our bailout, they didn't choose APC states. They gave to every state, even Fayoshe, who was consistently insulting the president every day of his four-year administration. 
who yeah, was given this I right. Think you're consistently criticizing the government. Well, it, criticism differs from insult. When you start so saying, when you start saying I, the man will die, the man is I, this, I, I, that I, becomes I, an insult. But despite his heavy criticism, let's use the word you want me to use, he never was denied his fair share. The bailout that other state got, he state got it. Everything. So I, I, I think our leaders should tell the people the truth. This government has been fair. And what we need to now do is to complement the actual. I mean, Ariaria Market now has a 9.7 kilowatt electricity system given to them so that they will have 24 hours because the government recognized the importance of Ariaria Market in, in uh, Onicha there. So I, I think they've been, I mean, is it Onicha our ABBA? So I think the government has been fair and equitable in the distribution of infrastructural development. And in terms of appointment, yes, there will always be agitation for more. It will never go around. But beyond appointment, what is your fair share? Have you been given the ecological fund, the third fund, fund, everything that was done by this government? There was never a time where a particular state was seen as an opposition state and they were denied their right. So the government has done its share. The, the, the people who now should do their share are the people that people listen to, the influencers, the elders, the leaders need to do their own share, educate the people. Because the truth remains, government will never solve all our problems. There are areas where we must lift it up ourselves. But where they have done well, we need to I mean, put that in, in the front burner so that can, Nigerians can, will can, understand. Can you, can you close on this? So when, you, when your party goes with a slogan, the next, next level, level, now you have the next level. Yeah. How soon are we likely to see and what are we likely to see? Well, the next level has been explained in so many ways. For instance, when this government came in, most of the rail lines, I mean, rail lines that were inherited were uh, uh, narrow gauge. All of them have been increased to be standard gauge. That's the next level. Now, the trader money will be upgraded to something more similar to like a microfinance credit system. So that is the, I mean, the next level in that. And in terms of job creation, in terms of uh, uh, power, we, we have moved from 3,000 megawatt to about 7,500 I mean, 7, megawatt. We have moved from 2,000 distribution to 5,000 megawatt being distributed. The next level is seeing it increase in leaps and in bond. Our roads have been fixed. So that's the next level. And the next level also include the fact that we will have a nation where all of us will be proud of. And the president said it in the dinner that he, his wife hosted on Saturday, that when I'm done with my eight years, you will see the difference between eight years that is well thought out by sincerity from the difference from a 16 years of waste and stealing and looting. You will see the difference. In the next four years, the, the foundation has been built in the last four years. In the next four years, it will be built upon and will begin to visibly see that difference in our lives, in infrastructure, in economy, in agriculture. I mean, right now, farmers have been loaned at 9%. It has never happened in a long time. We have 9%. And from, from what I understand, there's even a plan to, to maybe make it up to 6% for farmers to be able to... I mean, for me, that's next level. Just today, a news broke. I mean, yesterday, Nigeria has overtaken Egypt as the highest producer of rice in Africa. So that is next level. So we'll get to the point where we'll not just feed our people, we'll also feed Africa because we are truly going to be the giant of Africa, not in words, but in deeds and in action. And in Lagos, State, uh, let's close on that. Uh, in Lagos, uh, uh, the, you know, this, this worry about, you know, uh, some news that was, you know, peddled by a lot of other people, especially in the social media, about people who once lived happily amongst themselves. And yeah, people that, that is the problem we sense. have with politicians when they divide or seek to the But fortunately, the APC has shown that they are not uh, into ethnic politics. I mean, the, the spokesperson of APC in, in, in Lagos, the was his name. His name is Joe Ibokwe. That is not a Yoruba name. That's an Igbo man. So Igbos have a home in Lagos. Today in Lagos, health healthcare system that is offer to everybody is not discriminatory. Job opportunities is not, I mean, are not discriminatory. In Lagos, neko wayek fees being paid is not being paid to a only Ibrahim, it's paid to a Ogechuku, it's paid to a Hakim and, a, and Ibrahim. Everybody, as long as you reside and you live here, you pay your taxes in Lagos, Lagos is home to everybody. And that is being shown. The, the candidate of the APC, Babajide Sonwulu, has had extensive meeting and dialogue. And yesterday, the Ohainese Indigbo came and said, look, this is our man. We have seen that this man truly means business for us. And the Igbos have a home in Lagos. 
Nobody molests anybody because you are Igbo or you are Yoruba or you are Hausa. Everybody in Lagos have a home. And if any criminal uses politics to want to intimidate anybody, of course you know what to do. Report them and they will be dealt with by the law. Because the APC have a policy of an all-inclusive Lagos, a home for all. That is why the man term is for a greater Lagos. Lagos is a home for all. And you cannot have a home for all. I mean, you can't have a greater Lagos when it's not a home for all. Lagos is a home for everybody. Well, I think, I think at this point, I'd like to say many thanks for being such a nice company. Well, I think we had that conversation before coming in. And I said to him, I think I, think I should bring you. You're a member of the APC. Come talk about this, about national development, national unity and reconciliation, which is very key and paramount to many Nigerians. It's been a wrap on the show and I hope that, uh, well, in the days to come, we should be able to bring, uh, well, politicians from across political parties to come say something about the nation and the elections. I'm Sulaiman. See you again next week. Thank <laughs> you.